the Noah Methodist Church is happy to produce a lot of different content for the edification of Christ Church throughout the world. This daily segment that you're listening to right now corresponds with the Daily Bible Reading Challenge, which is hosted by Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho. If you want to download the list of readings that they publish for yourself or learn more about this challenge, this initiative, go to BibleReading.ChristKirk.com. I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm the pastor here in Nowata, and I read from the Berean Standard Bible, which you can also find at Berean.Bible. Consider subscribing to this podcast to be a part of this daily effort to grow in familiarity with and love of God's Holy Word. Let's dive in for today. Hey, I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm glad you've chosen to join me for some time in Scripture. If you're not in the right place, but for some reason you're watching this, you know, maybe just stick with it for a little bit and see if the Lord doesn't do a new thing in your heart, open you up. So I'd invite you just to be kind of in a calm spirit right now, just available to the Lord. And it's good just to hear these holy stories and these revelations from God may be a blessing to you. We're going to start back in today with Genesis chapter 21. Listen to the word of the Lord. Now, the Lord attended to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised. And Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore to him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Then Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and everyone who hears of this will laugh with me. She added, Who would have told Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham held a great feast on the day Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had borne to Abraham was mocking her son. And she said to Abraham, Expel that slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son, Isaac. Now this matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son Ishmael. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed about the boy and your maidservant. Listen to everything that Sarah tells you, for through Isaac your offspring will be reckoned. But I will also make a nation of the slave woman's son, because he is your offspring. Early in the morning, Abraham got up, took bread and a skin of water, put them on Hagar's shoulders, and sent her away with the boy. She left and wandered in the wilderness of Be'er Sheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she left the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down nearby, about a bow shot away, for she said, I cannot bear to watch the boy die. And as she sat nearby, she lifted up her voice and wept. Then God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, What is wrong, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he lies. Get up, lift up the boy, and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with the water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up and settled in the wilderness and became a great archer. And while he was dwelling in the wilderness of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. At that time, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in all you do. Now, therefore, Swear to me here before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or descendants. Show to me and the country in which you reside the same kindness that I have shown to you. And Abraham replied, I swear it. But when Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well that Abimelech's servants had seized, Abimelech replied, I do not know who has done this. You did not tell me, so I have not heard about it until today. So Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant. Abraham separated seven ewe lambs from the flock, and Abimelech asked him, 
Why have you set apart these seven ewe lambs? He replied, You are to accept the seven ewe lambs from my hand as a witness that I dug this well. So that place was called Be'er Sheba, because it was there that the two of them swore an oath. After they had made the covenant at Be'er Sheba, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, got up and returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Be'er Sheba, and there he called upon the name of the Lord, the Eternal God. And Abraham resided in the land of the Philistines for a long time. Genesis 22 Sometime later God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. So Abraham got up early the next morning, saddled his donkey, and took along two of his servants and his son Isaac. He split the wood for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had designated. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will go over there to worship, and then we will return to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. He himself carried the fire and the sacrificial knife and the two of them walked on together. Then Isaac said to his father, Abraham, My father. Here I am, my son, he replied. The fire and the wood are here, said Isaac. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two walked on together. When they arrived at the place God had designated, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar atop the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. Just then, the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him, said the angel. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Then Abraham looked up and saw behind him a ram in a thicket caught by its horns. So he went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. So to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time, saying, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will multiply your descendants like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies." And through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Abraham went back to his servants, and they got up and set out together for Be'er Sheba. And Abraham settled in Be'er Sheba. Sometime later, Abraham was told, Milcah has also borne sons to your brother Nahor, Uz the firstborn, his brother Buz, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Milcah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. Moreover, Nahor's concubine, whose name was Rima, bore Teba, Gahem, Tahash, and Maaka. Genesis chapter 23. Now Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died in Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham went out to mourn and to weep for her. Then Abraham got up from beside his dead wife and said to the Hittites, I am a foreigner and an outsider among you. 
Give me a burial site among you so that I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen to us, sir. You are God's chosen one among us. Bury your dead in the finest of our tombs. None of us will withhold his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. If you are willing for me to bury my dead, he said to them, Listen to me, and approach Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf to sell me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him. It is at the end of his field. Let him sell it to me in your presence for full price, so that I may have a burial, burial site. Now Ephron was sitting among the sons of Heth, so in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city, Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, No, my lord, listen to me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bury your dead. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and said to Ephron in their presence, If you will please listen to me, I will pay you the price of the field. Accept it from me, so that I may bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver, but what is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the standard of the merchants. So Ephron's field at Machpelah near Mamre, the cave that was in it, and all the trees within the boundaries of the field were deeded over to Abraham's possession in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field of Machpelah near Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and its cave were deeded by the Hittites to Abraham as a burial site. Genesis 24. By now Abraham was old and well along in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. So Abraham instructed the chief servant of his household who managed all he owned, Place your hand under my thigh, and I will have you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am dwelling, but will go to my country and my kindred to take a wife. For my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to follow me back to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham replied, Make sure that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me from my father's house and my ma native land, who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant placed his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed with all manner of good things from his master in hand. And he set out for Nahor's hometown in Aram Naharaim. As evening approached, he made the camels kneel down near the well outside the town at the time when the women went out to draw water. O Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please grant me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Here I am standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the town people are coming out to draw water. Now may it happen that the girl to whom I say, Please let down your jar that I may drink, and who responds, Drink, and I will water your camels as well, let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before the servant had finished praying, Rebekah, came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. Now the girl was very beautiful, a virgin who had not had relations with any man. 
She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. So the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me have a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she replied, and she quickly lowered her jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I will also draw water for your camels until they have had enough to drink. And she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw water until she had drawn water for all his camels. Meanwhile, the man watched her silently to see whether or not the Lord had made his journey a success, and after the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring weighing a becca, and two gold bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels. Whose daughter are you? he asked. Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She replied, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the son that Milcah bore to Nahor. Then she added, We have plenty of straw and feed, as well as a place for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not withheld his kindness and faithfulness from my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and he rushed out to the man at the spring. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists and heard Rebekah's words, the man said this to me, he went and found the man standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, said Laban. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came to the house, and the camels were unloaded. Straw and feed were brought to the camels, and water to wash his feet and the feet of his companions. Then a meal was set before the man, but he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I came to say. So Laban said, Please speak. I am Abraham's servant, he replied. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become rich. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age, and my master has given him everything he owns. My master made me swear an oath and said, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell, but you shall go to my father's house and to my kindred to take a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, what if the woman will not come back with me? And he told me, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and make your journey a success so that you may take a wife for my son from my kindred, kindred and from my father's house. And when you go to my kindred, if they refuse to give her to you, then you will be released from my oath. So when I came to the spring today, I prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if only you would make my journey a success. Here I am standing beside the spring. Now if a maiden comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me a drink of little water from your jar. And she replies, drink and I will draw water for your camels as well. May she be the woman the Lord has appointed for my master's son. And before I had finished praying in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, Please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will water your camels as well. So I drank, and she watered the camels. And then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she replied, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists. Then I bowed down and worshipped the Lord, and I blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who led me on the right road to take the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. But if not, let me know so that I may go elsewhere. Laban and Bethuel answered, this is from the Lord. We have no choice in the matter. Rebekah is here before you. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, just as the Lord 
has decreed. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then he brought out jewels of silver and gold and articles of clothing, and he gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious gifts to her brother and her mother. Then he and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night, night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, Send me on my way to my master. But her brother and mother said, Let the girl remain with us ten days or so. After that she may go. But he replied, Do not delay me. Since the Lord has made my journey a success, send me on my way so that I may go to my master. So they said, We will call the girl and ask her opinion. They called Rebekah and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she replied. So they sent their sister Rebekah on her way along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebekah and her servant girls got ready, mounted the camels, and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had just returned from Bir Laharoi, for he was f living in the Negev. Early in the evening, Isaac went out to the field to meditate, and looking up, he saw the camels approaching. And when Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? It is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all that he had done, and Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and took Rebekah as his wife. And Isaac loved her, and was comforted after his mother's death. We now go to the New Testament, John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the hometown of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So they hosted a dinner for Jesus there. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of expensive perfume made of pure nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was going to betray him, asked, Why wasn't this perfume sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? Jesus did not say this because Judas did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to take from what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. She has kept this perfume in preparation for the day of my burial. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews learned that Jesus was there, and they came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were deserting them and believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Finding a young donkey, Jesus sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on the colt of a donkey. At first his disciples did not understand these things, but after Jesus was glorified, they remembered what had been done to him. And they realized that these very things had also been written about him. Meanwhile, many people continued to testify that they had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead. That is also why the crowd went out to meet him, because they heard that he had performed this sign. Then the Pharisees said to one another, You can see that this is doing you no good. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now there, was, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested of him, 
Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip relayed this appeal to Andrew, and both of them went and told Jesus. But Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it. But whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, my servant will be as well. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this purpose that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said that an angel had spoken to him. In response, Jesus said, This voice was not for my benefit, but for yours. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd replied, We have heard from the law that the Christ will remain forever. So how can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, For a little while longer the light will be among you. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness will not overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become sons of light. After Jesus had spoken these things, he went away and was hidden from them. Although Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still did not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For this reason, they were unable to believe. For again, Isaiah says, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they cannot see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Nevertheless, many of the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved praise from men more than praise from God. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me alone, but in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me and uh, sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should remain in darkness. As for anyone who hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I have come, I have not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not receive my words. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know that his command leads to eternal life. So I speak exactly what the Father has told me to say. John 13. It was now just before the Passover feast, and Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. The evening meal was underway, and the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had delivered all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the supper, laid aside his outer garments, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel that was around him. He came to Simon Peter, who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never shall you wash my feet, Peter told him. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus told him, Whoever has already bathed needs only to wash his feet, and he will be completely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. That is why he said, Not all of you are clean. When Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer garments, he reclined with them again and asked, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, because I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example so that you should do as I have done for you. Truly, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not speaking about all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. The one who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it comes to pass, you will believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After Jesus had said this, he became troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, perplexed as to which one of them he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at his side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus which one he was talking about. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this morsel after I have dipped it. Then he dipped the morsel and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. And when Judas had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said to Judas, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew why Jesus had said this to him. Since Judas kept the money bag, some thought that Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as he had received the morsel, Judas went out into the night. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Lord, where are you going? Simon Peter asked. Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow later. Lord, said Peter, Why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Will you lay down your life for me? Jesus replied. Truly, truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. That's the word of the Lord. If you never heard these stories before, oh boy, do you have some wonderful things coming. If you have heard these stories before, you know the wonderful things that are coming. And we'll go over them tomorrow and the next day. 
I hope you come along for the ride. See you then.